Mark Coaches Show. I'm your host, Tom Taylor. Thanks for being with us for another edition of exciting Dobbins Middle Football. The Indians move up this week in the 6A polls. We'll talk about that coming up in a few minutes. And, of course, our show you can watch now. Again, new kind of new place to find it, TomTaylorSports.com. And, of course, the new show comes out every Wednesday at noon. And, man, what a barn burner. Tell you what, uh, not one for the faint heart of 2015 Dobbins Middle Football. Great game, Oak Ridge. Great game, great game brother, Sevier County. And, Coach, Last week, another barn burner home for homecoming against a very good Hardin Valley team. And, wow, it's a thrill a minute with Indian football. Well, we're playing outstanding teams. Uh, and we knew that going into it. We knew that at the break, you know, um, you know, we would be fortunate if we were 4-1, and one, and we are 4-1. and one, And we've had a lot of good things happen. Nobody plays harder than our kids. Um, we... Uh, did not play well on offense in the first half. We only had one first down. Uh, we had one first down and one touchdown. And uh, But defensively, we played very well in the first half, I thought. We gave up 16 points, but we had some tough field position. And uh, so I, I thought the defense kept us in it in the first half, no question. Harden Valley's a good football team. They, they got a bunch of guys that can run. Uh, quite aggressive on defense. The quarterback grows every week. The running backs run, uh, they're, they're hard. I mean, they, they run harder than back in the day when the arena was next door here and they had the disco dance floor and we was running over there. Um, I, it, it's a good football team, and it was a good win for our football team. Absolutely. And of course, being the week off, in years past we used to talk about this, Bumps, bruises, kind of nicks, scrapes. You get a chance to get those guys healed up. And, and right now, injury-wise, you're at the halfway point. Pretty good shape. Well, we lost Edward Newcomb for the, probably for the rest of the year. Hmm. Edward was our leading receiver. He had two catches for 47 yards, was doing a great job blocking the other night. He had a touchdown catch right after the half, and uh, he went up and came down awkwardly, and there's a possibility that uh, he has an ACL. Uh, he and I are both hoping that, uh, the doctors and trainers are wrong and that the investments that we've put in the MRI machines come back in positive, but it uh, doesn't look good. Getting Brandon Gillum back this week, uh, we've got some guys banged. Kellen Glasgow banged up. Gunnar Yates banged up. Um, but uh, hopefully we can nurse them back a little bit. And the lure of a chance to go play the number one ranked team in the state the following week will uh, help their uh, help help their growth and help their health. Uh, so, um, you know, probably about where we would normally be this time of year. There's a few guys going to get hurt. There's a few guys get hurt playing putt putt across the street here. <laughs> We're here, by the way, at Big East Clam Bar, right across from the Pup Pup, as Coach alluded to, here on Stone Drive. We'll talk more about this great place coming up in a few minutes at the Chicken Sandwich tonight. Kind of did something a little different and on his recommendation, and it was dynamite. Very, very good. Great sandwich. Our show brought to you by Hayworth Tire. We want to say thanks to Brian and his great folks at Hayworth Tire of Kingsport. Also, Associate Orthopedics of Kingsport, Dr. Patrick Riggins. Thank you, sir, of course, being our great sponsor. Diane Hills and Southern Dwelling. And also cross country, more than a mortgage, our buddy Russell Street. We're going to have these folks on in the second half of the season to come by and, and talk about their business as we again do the Graham Clark Coaches Show here at Biggie's Clam Bar in Kingsport. Quick break. We'll come right back and talk about a dynamite win for homecoming. Big win over Hardin Valley in the conference. We'll talk about that and more right after this on the Graham Clark Coaches Show. Coach Graham Clark here representing the Associated Orthopedics of Kingsport. Associated Orthopedics at King Sports has been proudly serving King Sports since 1953. The only orthopedic group in the area to serve both Holston Valley and Indian Path Hospitals. Associated Orthopedics of King Sport provide team doctors for Dobbins Bennett and most other area schools. Nine physicians and two physician assistants ready to provide comprehensive orthopedic care to you and yours. Sprains, broken bones, joint replacement, hand surgery, the good folks at the Orthopedics of Kingsport can take care of. Orthopedic walk-in service and clinic, available Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 4 o'clock. Associated Orthopedics of Kingsport is a proud supporter of Dobbins Bennett football and here to get you back on the field as soon as possible. They've been keeping me running and moving since 1972. I'm proud to be a part of the Associated Orthopedic team.
If you are buying a home or a current homeowner and just curious about what your refinancing options are, I invite you to call me today. Hi, I'm Russell Street, branch manager for Cross Country Mortgage Incorporated in Kingsport. If you are thinking about financing a home and you don't know what you qualify for, I can help you with no obligations. At Cross Country Mortgage, we work closely with all of our customers from start to finish. Let me put my years of experience to work for you for all of your home financing needs. Visit us again at Cross Country Mortgage at 505 East Center Street in Kingsport. You can call us today at 423-246. 2126. That's 423 246 2126. Or visit us at www.crosscountrykpt.com. I can help you with your pre qualification today. Cross Country Mortgage Inc. License number NMLS 3029. Kingsport Branch NMLS 855512. Russell Street NMLS 148950. All loans subject to underwriting approval. Certain restrictions apply. Call for details. Equal housing opportunity lender. To verify licensing, visit www.nmlsconsumeraccess.org. And welcome back to Biggie's Clan Bar. I'm your host, Tom Taylor, again for the Grand Park Coaches Show here at Biggie's Clan Bar on Stone Drive in Kingsport, right across the Butt Pub. Again, we're in the Blackbird Lounge. You want to be sure and give these folks a call and say, we'd love to reserve this for a holiday get-together. Uh, we're inside of, what, 95 days for Christmas, and it is filling up. And uh, Folks, uh, don't procrastinate. You snooze, you lose. So be sure and do that. Give them a call here at Biggie's and say, tell me about the Blackbird Lounge. They have a party in here and a get-together either for uh, Thanksgiving or certainly Christmas and a New Year's Eve or the New Year's holiday as well. So uh, that's uh, right here at Biggie's Clam Bar, right across from the putt putt on Stone Drive in Kingsport. Our other sponsor, I want to say thanks to Brian Hayworth. And, Coach, you were telling me that Ty Hayworth was the offensive player of the week for the Wake Forest Demon Deacons of the ACC. So I'm sure that makes Cindy and, and Papa Brian very proud. 17-14 to 14 <laughs> win, last second field goal over Army. And uh, Hayworth's not only putting out good tires, but also good players. And uh, they, uh, Austin, uh, I think they got to see two games this week, one at Charleston Southern with Austin playing and then back to see Ty play. And uh, it's unusual for an offensive lineman to be the offensive player of the week. But uh, Ty did receive that award uh, from the Wake Forest coaching staff and tickled for him. We got a lot of guys that doing some good things out there. And uh, – you know, anybody wants to advertise with us, we'll talk about them some more. There you go. <laughs> Amen, brother. Preach it. And, of course, Brian, all this traveling is doing, following these two boys. Yeah, he's probably going to burn up some tires this spring, or no, the spring this summer and now into the fall. And I think we know we're going to get him some tires at Hayworth Tire here in Kingsport. Also, uh, our friend Diane Hills, again, with Southern Dwellings, I want to tell you about this particular property. Uh, it is a gentleman's estate. About eight and a half acres, a beautiful home with a grand front porch, main level masters you see on the screen, two staircases, custom trim, vaulted ceiling, uh, gosh, a uh, heated pool, heated saltwater heated pool, no less, flanked by a complimenting pool house. I mean, it's got everything. And it's a phone call away at 343-4118. It's on Shipley Ferry Road. The school systems are Holston Elementary, Holston Middle, and Solomon Central High School. Obviously, in a 35-second pitch here, I can't do anything uh, no way I can do the justice of this home. you got to go give a tour and, and walk through it, and she can do that for you. Our buddy Diane K. Hills at 343-4118, 343-4118. And call her and ask about uh, 1781 Shipley Ferry Road in Kingsport. And, again, she'll give you a personal walkthrough, and she's a dynamite lady, and she loves Dobbins Middle Football and loves Coach Graham Clark. Coach, let's jump in and talk about the highlights. 24-22 victory over a very good Hardin Valley team. Conference win for homecoming. And let's pick up the highlights for, for the Indians. We started off the game on offense, but we uh, three and outed. Uh, then they had a little trouble with the extent change. And uh, James Buchanan picked that thing up and ran it down to the 11-yard line. Uh, and in three plays, We are down to third down and two. Uh, We gained uh, five on first down, three on second down, and hand the ball off to Jacoby Thompson. Solid blocking by Tucker Hall, uh, Grayson Castle, Michael Foster, and then Elijah Dunn had a block on the edge. Back on defense, and Hardin Valley put a nice little drive together. Uh, Logan Schaefer and Jacob Roller with a tackle for a loss there on first down. Setting up second and 12, we go to third and three, and uh, we're going to get a big defensive stop. Unfortunately, after this big defensive stop, we got caught napping a little bit on our punt return team, and uh, they faked a punt on us, uh, got a big first down. We actually had the guy tackled. Anyway, here we are with the third down stop. 
Ivan Phillips and Chris Moore. Love to see that tackle go backwards, especially when it's really good uh, running backs. And we don't have a very good series on offense the next series and have to go back on defense. Uh, clogging up the middle, first down and 10. That was uh, Michael Nickens uh, on the tackle. Second down and 10, Tyson Cornett's going to get a big sack. And um, we have some pressure coming off the edge. Nice contain. And we get a sack from Tyson. Played about seven defensive linemen. Uh, kept them healthy. They punt on fourth down. Uh, some questions on the punt. And I was going to explain this. The uh, we, we signal for a fair catch. And then after the fair catch, evidently uh, you can't block after the fair catch. The signal was a block below the waist. It wasn't a block below the waist. It was a block by a fair catch. Hmm. So the signal was wrong for those of you who know the signals. Uh, obviously, we're not getting good field position. That started on the 10, and Hardin Valley starts off. Uh, again, we get another good defensive stop. This is second down and seven. Uh, Ivan Phillips, Jacob Rower, love to have those linebackers meet at the ball carrier. I, I, sometimes you just wonder if they have a called meeting. We're going to meet at the quarterback. Uh, we have them down there close. We have a nice pass defense uh, on a third and eight from the nine by Quentin Polinski. He gets the pass broken up. They have to settle for a field goal. It's 10 to seven. Uh, we are third down and 15 here. And watch close if you like seeing first downs, because this is our first down. Uh, it's a nice scramble, a good catch by Kobe Gladson. Uh, we go for it on fourth down a little bit later. We don't get it. Hardin Valley scores again with a minute 39 left in the half. And we go in at halftime down 16 to 7. Hardin Valley got the ball first to start the second half. We challenged our guys a little bit. Matter of fact, you could have probably passed a collection plate. Uh, a mishandled snap again. Foster and Schaefer tackle for a loss. And uh, I think they may have brought some snakes and strychnine out in the locker room. I'm not sure. <laughs> Third down and 18. Uh, nice play coming up by Brett Rogers. They gained 13. But now you watch. If Brett Rogers doesn't come off this block out here and make his play, we're in serious trouble. A little flare screen. Crack on our linebacker. Brett coming off two blockers out there. Mm, that was, That's a heck of a play. Yes, it was. Fourth down and five, and they're going to punt to the Indians. And we're going to see if our offense is up to the challenge. And first down from the 34, I guess we got a little more aggressive in our play calling. Uh, Kobe Gladson hip by Cole Maupin nice for play. 43 yards. Uh, and we see a little excitement, you know, again. Come on, let's get down there. Let's run that next play. Come on, guys. Um, so, first down, 23-yard line. Cole Maupin to Edward Newcomb. Nice ball. Edward catches it and gets us in the end zone. Extra point was good by Landon Sayers, and all of a sudden, it's a ball game again. Great athletic move by Newcomb, too. That was a great catch and great run. Oh, gosh, yeah. We're going to miss Edward. We really are. Um, we go through a couple of series, I think, without anything that I would consider a highlight. This is a great break on the ball by Bryce Barrett. Uh, gives them a third down and four, which they pick up, and then they drive on down and score. So 22-14, extra point missed, and we're back on a roll here. That's another mm. nice catch by Edward Newcomb and a good ball by Cole Maupin. Uh, and gets us a first down. Here we go. Good run by Blake Rogers. Get up in there, Blake. Had a boy. We take it down, get a couple of good things to happen. A uh, bunch of fours and sevens and nines. And... Uh, 
It's going to be a nice ball from Maupin to uh, Jordan Jeffers. No, Jordan, he needs to go to lifting some more weights so he don't go backwards when he gets hit there. Might want to get on some of them steroids. No, I'm not going to say that. Uh, and here we are, first down and two. Uh, Blake Rogers behind Malone Foster and Castle for a touchdown. And we get the two-point conversion. And uh, it's 22 to 22. Two-point conversion was three yards, so I didn't put it in there. Okay, there's three fast yards, though. Back on defense after a kick in the zone by Landon Sayers. And we're a little bit jacked up now. Ben Foster and uh, James Buchanan. Ben had seven tackles, two tackles for a loss, and a sack on the last play of the game. James had eight, a pass breakup, and a fumble recovery. Uh, third down and 16. And let's see. Let's move ahead in the action here. There you go. Remember they used to say that on all the coaches' shows? Let's move ahead in it due to time constraints. Um, pass breakup by uh, James Buchanan. He almost picked that thing. Um, nice play. They punt to us. We three and out. Uh, Harden Valley plays a little defense, too. And a third down and five. Pass breakup by Quentin Polinski. Another quick screen that he comes up and sniffs out like an old bird dog and takes care of it. And then we go on a 14-play drive that ends up just crazy. Uh, this is a first down and 14 after a holding call on uh, first and 10. Nice ball. We've now got Brett Rogers at wide receiver. For Eddie Newcomb, and he makes a nice play, makes some people miss. Uh, third down and five, and I think our tempo has affected them a little bit. They had a bunch of two-way players. Uh, we got a third down and five, and we're going to use motion to try and gain some leverage. They do a pretty nice job adjusting to it. Uh, but the corner set on the out route. And Cole did a good job of recognizing it and a great catch by Brett Rogers. So we pick up another first down on a late hit on the quarterback. And we're down here on 23-yard line, first and 10. Blake Rogers, nice zone, excuse me, nice zone read. Uh, and we go to second down and four uh, on the six-yard line. Now, a lot of people ask about this, so I, that's why I put it on here. I thought we had scored, okay? No mark, no down. Uh, as you can see, nobody's sprinting in to down the ball. So there were a couple of shoves, some verbal exchanges. We ended up getting two personal fouls. Knocked us back, first down on the 30, and then we got a holding call. Uh, we almost pick that sucker up. We go for it on fourth down. And we have an interception, but our defense uh, has a loss of six yards by Ben Foster. Ivan Phillips pulls this thing up. Ben makes the play from the backside. On third and 14, and, and, and I'm going to send stickers to both bands because both bands were playing out <laughs> like crazy. Uh, it's third and 14. Hardin Valley's band was playing. Our band was playing. It was loud. They try to check off, <clears throat> the ball snapped, and we tackle the guy for a safety to go 26-24. Now, of course, after that safety, they have to kick off for uh, to us. There's three minutes and 36 seconds left in the game. We uh, got a clip on the kickoff return, had a good hands team in. Uh, we go second down in seven. Cole's letting the clock run down. A gain of 22 for Blake Rogers. Makes a couple of guys miss and gets us in good territory. We get a uh, third down and three, and we're going to pick up about 11. A great run. Uh, this would have wrapped up the game. Unfortunately, we had a holding call on this. And 
So we had to come back and replay uh, third down. Uh, you know, we've, that's that's tough. That's tough. That's a great run. That's almost a 20-yard mm-hmm. gain. Hard and, run, and the too. game would have been over. So we let the clock run. We, 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 go for, we go for it on third down again. We let the clock run down to uh, 27 seconds. Uh, and the fourth down or the third down play runs it down to 22 seconds. Uh, and now Landon Sayers is punting. Critical. Big punt. They're sending pressure. And boy, he nails it. I mean, he nails it. That thing could have had a stewardess on it. I guess they're called <laughs> flight attendants nowadays, but it was high enough. And we get a big play. Uh, we They end up completing one. We're playing back deep, and then we get a pass interference. And then on uh, second down, Ben Foster comes down with a sack. Huge play for us. One of a few, and, you know, there's a lot of excitement at J. Fred Johnson Stadium. Uh, a barn burner. I know you used to call them a barn bar- burner, and it was. And, uh, you know, I'll find some barns to burn down if that's what we got to do <laughs> for these things. Uh, great, great night of football at Dobbins Bennett. Thought our kids played so hard in the second half. And uh, really proud of their effort in coming behind against a very athletic Hardin Valley team. Well, obviously these kids play hard every night. And, of course, Friday night was no exception. I guess that's the one thing you say each week, and it's – Watch the highlights; it's very evident. These kids laid out there on the line for you every Friday night and leave nothing, uh, nothing on the field. They leave it all out there for you. Even they? the coaches woke up sore Saturday morning. <laughs> you know, uh, and and that's when you know. I mean, it's just a heck of a ball game. We we uh, struggled at times to run the ball, uh, which we did very well the week before, and uh, so we threw it more in the second half. Cole Maupin ended up 13 for 20 for 202 yards. Uh, Kobe Gladson, four catches uh, for 70-some yards. And, you know, everybody's trying to shut down Elijah, the guy that had 57 catches last year. Elijah had two catches, uh, but uh, did a lot of good things for us blocking. Uh, You know, you watch the defense, and you see in pursuit of that ball so many times and just run like crazy. And uh, I just thought it was a big win for our young men. Absolutely. And let's recap the other games around the Big East before we go to the break. Of course, Maribel defeated Science Hill 52-17. Uh, Bearden got William Blunt 44-34. And Bradley Central defeated Jefferson County in a shootout there 28-23. And again, uh, Dobbins been with a big win over Hardin Valley 24-22 to put themselves 4-1 and overall and, of course, 2-0 and in the Big East Conference. We'll take a break, come right back, set the schedule this week, our final non-conference week of the year. Again, the Indians are off this week. Some other teams in the Big East are also off, and we'll set the schedule for next week and also preview the Indians traveling on a Thursday night down to take on the number one team in the state, a very good Maribel Rebel football team. Come back with us right after this. We'll have more for you on the Graham Clark Coaches Show. Coach Graham Clark here representing the Associated Orthopedics of Kingsport. Associated Orthopedics at King Sports has been proudly serving King Sports since 1953. The only orthopedic group in the area to serve both Holston Valley and Indian Path Hospitals. Associated Orthopedics of King Sport provide team doctors for Dobbins Bennett and most other area schools. Nine physicians and two physician assistants ready to provide comprehensive orthopedic care to you and yours. Sprains, broken bones, joint replacement, Hand surgery, the good folks at the Orthopedics of Kingsport can take care of. Orthopedic walk-in service and clinic, available Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 4 o'clock. Associated Orthopedics of Kingsport is a proud supporter of Dobbins Bennett football and here to get you back on the field as soon as possible. They've been keeping me running and moving since 1972. I'm proud to be a part of the Associated Orthopedic team.
If you are buying a home or a current homeowner and just curious about what your refinancing options are, I invite you to call me today. Hi, I'm Russell Street, branch manager for Cross Country Mortgage Incorporated in Kingsport. If you are thinking about financing a home and you don't know what you qualify for, I can help you with no obligations. At Cross Country Mortgage, we work closely with all of our customers from start to finish. Let me put my years of experience to work for you for all of your home financing needs. Visit us again at Cross Country Mortgage at 505 East Center Street in Kingsport. You can call us today at 423-246. 2126. That's 423 246 2126. Or visit us at www.crosscountrykpt.com. I can help you with your pre qualification today. Cross Country Mortgage Inc. License number NMLS 3029. Kingsport Branch NMLS 855512. Russell Street NMLS 148950. All loans subject to underwriting approval. Certain restrictions apply. Call for details. Equal housing opportunity lender. To verify licensing, visit www.nmlsconsumeraccess.org. Welcome back to the Grand Park Coaches Show. I'm your host, Tom Taylor. Again, we've gotten through a great Heart Valley Highlight Package, and so now let's set the scene for the Big East Conference this week. Again, what, four teams out of the Big East to the top ten in the state, which is a quite a, an accomplishment and quite an honor for this conference. Marable and Dobbins been at the top of 2-0. and Bradley Central, Science Hill, Bearden, and Heart Valley all 1-1. and And Jeff County and William Blunt looking for their first wins of the season of the conference, and they are 0-2, of course. The Indians are 4-1 on the season. Their next opponent would be Marable, who at this point is 5-0. They're playing Bearden coming up on Friday night. Open dates, Dobbins Minute, Jefferson County, Bradley Central, and William Blunt playing this week. Science Hills is going to be in gray at Daniel Boone. Marable takes on the Bearden Bulldogs at Bearden. And Hardin Valley, the Hawks, trying to bounce back in this tough loss to DB. They'll play a non-conference game against Knox Powell. Dobbins Minute, all-time of the win the other night, 768 wins, 226 defeats. And the man to my right here, Graham Clark, with a overall coaching record of Dobbins Minute at 219 wins and 52 defeats. And, Coach, uh, before we uh, get into the Marable Rebel ball game, uh, I do want to remind folks one more time about the Blackbird Lounge. That phone number, by the way, we said earlier in the show, 765-9633. It's a neat place. Seats up to 40. Of course, you can't see it here because everything's focused our way on, on the camera. But big, uh, again, a lot of room, two rows of tables. You can come in and have a group. There's uh, big screen televisions, DVD players. So whatever you need, I know uh, Shane has told us they've had baby showers in here. They've had bachelorette parties in here. They've had certainly Christmas parties, retirement parties, just about any kind of party, a <coughs> Bunko party, I believe is what they said. So uh, 765-9633. We're thinking about the holidays. We're inside of 95 days. So call them ask about the Blackbird Lounge. There's no charge to rent this facility, and the food is awesome. You got me to eat the chicken sandwich last week, and it was good. Wasn't it great? Yeah. And, you know, lasagna is not even on their menu, and they fixed it for our team, and it was unbelievable. I want to know how to get my name on that list for the bachelorette parties. <laughs> I mean, just, you know, just whenever the calls go out, just go ahead and, Call G at yeah. 1-800. <laughs> Having a good time. There you go, my man, Graham Clark. 765-9633, the number to call for, again, to rent the uh, Blackbird Lounge. And, again, it is free. Uh, and, again, uh, as you said, Coach, they fed you once. So, what, they're going to feed the team a couple more times? Is that right? They'll feed us two more times. Yeah. I look forward to it. May do that chicken sandwich. It's awesome. Because uh, it, it is a delicious sandwich. Uh, and they'll, uh, you know, just whatever you ask them to make up, they make it up, and it's going to be great. And we really enjoyed coming out here in the service. Got in here, was leaving for Sevier County right afterwards. Ate, jumped on the bus. We were out of here in no time and uh, heading down to Sevier County. So I would highly recommend Biggie's. Uh, got a little music going on out here tonight uh, and a good little band playing a little Hey Baby. And we – uh Wish I didn't have to go back to work, but I do. Uh, so, a lot of things going on out here at Biggie's, and uh, come join us sometime for the show. You got it. Right across from the putt-putt on Stone Driver in Kingsport, Biggie's Clam Bar. One more time, the number to call about reserving this room, 765-9633. Coach, 12 state championships in 17 years. I would think that's probably the barometer to gauge your football team by based on state championships. You get a chance to go down on a Thursday night, October the 1st, and battle down there, the Maryville Rebels. And if I did my homework right, uh, two and two you are against the Maryville Rebels. So uh, get a chance to go down there for next Thursday night and see what the Indians can draw up against the Rebels. Well, I, I don't know when DB won the two. Uh, Maybe it's. It may have been a while back, but. Uh, 
We've played them twice in the playoffs. For years, they were a different classification than we were. Uh, we have played them twice in the playoffs in 2009 and uh, in 2012. And uh, I really thought we had a shot in 2012, but we did turn the ball over uh, five times and got a touchdown call back, touchdown pass call back. Uh, uh, it, they're, a great, they're a great program, very obviously. Um, I've gone down, especially when they were a separate classification, talked ball with Coach Quarles a time or two. For years, we scrimmaged and swapped ideas and um, do an outstanding job. He has good players. Obviously, you can't win without good players. Uh, but uh, uh, they always do a good job with their quarterbacks. And uh, uh, they always see, you know, they've had a long run of good quarterbacks. Pat and Robinette went to Vanderbilt. They had one that went to uh, South Carolina a few years ago. Um, so uh, they've won a few, okay? But uh, we look forward to the challenge of going down there. That's why I like being in this conference, challenging every week. And, uh, you know, we gave the guys a couple of days off this weekend, chance for them to uh, – Maybe go see the girlfriends for a few minutes. Me to go see Delbert McClinton uh, at Rhythm and Roots and uh, find out that he's alive and well. Uh, you know, it ain't all George Jones and Merle Haggard. There's more out there. <laughs> and uh, we are anxiously uh, awaiting the test and how our team responds to the test of the Maryville Red Rebels. You're at the halfway point of the season. Grade your football team, A, B, C, or D. Where are they right now? Well, you know, I think effort-wise, we play as hard as you can play. I think we're an A. I thought we tackled better last week. I would probably put that at a B. Uh, I thought our passing game was better last week. Uh, I would put that at a B. Our running game was not where I wanted it to be, but a lot of that had to do with the fact that we started running the ball well after we got some people out of the box. Uh so oh, we're a solid B. You know, at my house growing up, a B was pretty dead gum good. <laughs> I mean, it was celebration. It was time to fix a coconut pie. <laughs> and thank the Lord, he's going to make it after all. <laughs> oh, Miss Marie was happy to make that pie. The boys going to pass. That's good. <laughs> That's good. So you watch this team and you see, again, we talked about the state championships and you're going to watch a lot of film. You already have watched a lot of film. And what do you feel like you can do to go down there? What's it going to take without, you know, showing you all your cards that, to beat this football team? Well, Tom, you, you can't turn the ball over. You cannot turn the ball over. That's something we've done pretty good because they're probably not going to turn the ball over much. They execute well. Uh, when we played them in 2012, we turned it over five times. We had one takeaway. So we ended up getting beat 42 to 21. Uh, and, and we turned it over when we had drives going. So you can't get some good things going and then turn it over. Uh, you got you got to do a fabulous job of, of tackling, and you got to make sure to figure out who their go-to guy is and do what you got to do to shut him down. And so that's what will happen next Thursday, October the 1st. Again, the Indians off this weekend, as you heard him say, get a chance to get a little R&R &R and get ready for the Red Rebels. And that will be a 7 o'clock game on a Thursday night. And for the those of you who think that you were going to watch it here, it has been blocked by um, uh, folks down that way. So it will not be run up here. So get in your cars, get your tickets, and get on down the road. There you go. And we'll talk about it a week after next. There is no show next week. Again, we'll be back in two weeks to bring you this show. Again, it comes out every Wednesday at noon, TomTaylorSports.com, and again, the Graham Clark Coaches Show. And so, Coach, another great uh, another great show, another great week to promote Dobbins Middle Football, and a bunch of hardworking youngins get a well-deserved week off and, and get ready for the Rebels. Well, just, let's get ready to roll, Tom Taylor. We're just tickled with how our kids have played, uh, the development that, they've, that they're making, and uh, can't wait till the next one. In the Big East Conference, again, before we close, Maribel number one out of the Big East in the state. Dobbins ended up to number six. Science Hill falls with a loss to Maribel to number nine in the state. And in Bradley Central, number 10. So, Coach, out of 10, four come from this conference. That's a great testimony to how good this conference is. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what, too. Uh, and Hardin Valley's not far. Uh, they, they are they're really, they're really good. So, uh, our, our conference is going to make us – you either get better or you get gone. And – 
the guy that gets going, if we don't get better, it's probably me. <laughs> so uh, we got to get better. And, and and we have made progress every week. Really proud of our kids and enjoying doing this show with you. You got it. I do as well. Four and one at the break. Again, they'll come back in on October the 1st. As Coach said, a 7 o'clock kickoff in Maribel against the Rebels. Tonight's show brought to you by Cross Country. More, more than a mortgage with our buddy Russell Street. Also, Southern Dwellings with Diane Hills. Also, Associate Orthopedics of Kingsport, Dr. Riggins. And our buddy Brian Hayworth, Hayworth Tire. They're all our buddies. We appreciate them very much. And, of course, Biggie's Clam Bar here. And, again, be sure and give them a call and find out about this room. And also, come over here on Tuesdays. It's two for one night every Tuesday at Biggie's Clam Bar right across from the Putt Puddle and Stone Drive in Kingsport. For our producer Robert Kale and also for our head coach Graham Clark, this is Tom Taylor telling as always, hey, win or lose, be a good sport. We'll see you in two weeks right here on the Graham Clark Coaches Show. So long, everybody.